Closing in on Kyiv, a Russian convoy that extends more than 40 miles is heading for the Ukrainian capital, and experts fear the worst is yet to come. Good evening, I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Cher Calvin. Tonight, most of the Russian forces that surrounded Ukraine are now inside the country as Ukrainians brace for battles that could decide their country's future. The fighting expected to be more fierce, destructive, and deadlier than anything we have seen so far. Periodically, we've been getting live pictures like this. This snowy scene from inside Ukraine. This is an area known as the Kyiv city center. It is already 9 a.m. Tuesday there. The quietness of this setting likely to change over the next 24 to 72 hours. And then there is this new video from a reliable source showing a massive explosion at a government building in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. Ukrainians have taken up weapons in advance of new battles, preparing to fight to defend their homeland. We have live team coverage on the fighting, the sanctions, the humanitarian crisis, and what's next. KTLA's Pedro Rivera has the breaking details live from our newsroom. Pedro. Hey, journals in Ukraine are reporting air raid sirens going off in Kharkiv as that fighting continues. You guys showed that video. I counted at least four other cities that have had those air raid sirens go off so far. It is a critical morning in the fight to maintain democracy in Ukraine. And in this latest act of aggression from Russia, it shows that things could possibly get worse. A Russian military military convoy about 40 miles long making its way to the capital city. The attacks ramping up Monday as Ukraine's second largest city with a population of 1.4 million, Kharkiv, was bombarded. This video showing residential apartment buildings indiscriminately hit with shellings. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky calling the attack a war crime, with schools and homes destroyed by Russian forces. The state which commits war crimes against civilians cannot be a member of a security council. The mayor of Kharkiv reports nine civilians were killed in the barrage, including three children. In total, more than 400 civilians have been killed as we have reached day six of this invasion. If that were true, it would potentially be a war crime. Obviously, there are a range of international fora that would assess that. Prosecutors in the International Criminal Court in The Hague, Netherlands, are looking into possible war crimes committed by Russia, and they say they will do so as rapidly as possible. In the meantime, Ukrainians are fighting back. These citizens standing in the face of invasion, stopping a Russian tank. You got to hand it to the Ukrainians who have been fighting very hard for their country and making an impact and making a dent on Mr. Putin's abilities. Reports from Ukraine indicate Russia has not been able to make significant progress over the last two days, but the fighting is only expected to intensify in Kyiv. Satellite images show Monday a convoy of Russian troops, tanks and armored vehicles stretching some 40 miles on the outskirts of the Ukrainian capital. Make no mistake, Mr. Putin still has at his disposal, significant combat power. More sanctions are coming Russia's way. Switzerland has decided not to remain neutral and impose sanctions on Russian companies and freezing assets, while the United States is expected to issue more sanctions targeting Russian banks from accessing reserve funds. The fight has also moved online. The hacker group Anonymous targeting Russian state-run TV and other hackers targeting the Russian stock market. During his press conference, President Zelensky announcing he signed an application to join the European Union, saying they earned the right to be together with everyone in Europe. It is just after 10 a.m. Tuesday in Moscow, and Russia's Vladimir Putin just held some kind of a press conference with his cabinet. In this clip from Russian state-affiliated television, he said the U.S. and the West were, quote, a empire of lies after sanctions were imposed. Now, there's been a mass exodus of Ukrainians seeking refuge in other countries. The United Nations says more than 520,000 refugees have fled, and the U.S. warns that the U.N. warns that that number could reach as high as 5 million. A meeting between Russia and Ukraine was held Monday in Belarus. No deal has been reached, but the sides have agreed to meet again. But we're going to see if that actually goes along. Zelensky has come out to say that he believes Russia synchronized their uh, invasions and their bombarding of Ukraine during those negotiations. All eyes, though, today or Tuesday morning are going to be on President Biden and his state of the dress, state of the union address. Now, even a newsroom, Pedro Vera, KTLA 5 News, back to you.